Hi everyone, I'm Marcy Best, current independent demonstrator with Stamping Up, and I am from Clovis, California. Welcome and happy Sunday. I am excited today um, to share another Christmas card with you. It will be my third one in the series of my Christmas cards that I'm sharing. Let me check here till I'm changing to live chat and getting rid of these ads that come up on the side. Hi, Carrie. How are you? Hi, Carol, Connie, Sherry. Hello, Deborah. Hi, Marilee. How are you? And hi, Leslie. So I, um, yesterday was my birthday, so we had a lot of fun. We went sailing in the morning with my son and his family. Um, one time we kind of tipped quite a bit. I was down below with my grandson getting us some lunch and uh, my daughter-in-law was driving, steering, whatever. My son was, my son, my husband was helping her and um, kind of telling her what to do. And I have to say, it's hard because when you want to turn right and they say go right, you have to steer left because your, uh, the keel below turns left and that's what makes you go that way. Anyway, it's, it's kind of backwards and a little bit hard to do. Thanks for the birthday wishes. Um, so it was funny because, um, the, you know, it, it all depends on the way the sails are going and the wind and which way we're steering and everything. And, but I just felt us going and that's my biggest fear, especially with my grandson with us, but, um, it was fine. My husband's like, I got it. He took control and everything was fine. Um, but he laughs at me because we could be 10 or 15 degrees turned, which is what sailboats do. But we used to have a wakeboard boat and we don't tilt. And so, um, now that I'm tilting on a sailboat, um, I have to get used to it because I'm sure I freaked out a little more than I needed to, but it was still, you know, I want to be, I want a smooth sail, just straight. None of this tilting stuff, but anyway, we had a good time. And then we, um, what did we do after that? We went and came back and then I delivered some furniture to a friend. We got a few new pieces. So, um, I, I gave my other stuff away and, um, yeah, then came back and I worked a little bit on this Christmas card. The one we're going to do today, I am creating 150 of. So, um, like I said before, my last couple, I decided as I was sim assembling that I wanted to stop and show you guys what I'm doing and how I did it and, you know, my thought process on it because I'm hoping to share some inspiration for you on some different ideas. And I am loving the Sending Cheer Bundle. Absolutely love this. Um, I didn't think I would. I was like, oh, I can make my own tags because it's, you know, to make your tags. Um, but anyway, another fun card today. Um, let's see. Hi, Trina. How are you? Hi, Susan. Good evening, all Central California. S Susan, are you from Central California? You, you might have told me before, but I don't recall. Hello. Hi, Judy. Hi, Joanna. From England. Welcome. Hi, Mary. Hi, Susan. Now, thank you for the birthday wishes. Hi, Tammy. Thank you, everybody, for the birthday wishes. Ooh, 23 degrees. I don't know how cold it was today, but I think yesterday it was supposed to be like 29 or something. I don't think it was that cold. But today I was cold. I always call my craft room the catacombs because in the wintertime it gets pretty cold. So I usually have a, a stand-up heater over here, which I did pull out today. South Carolina is 82. Oh, Deborah, me too. I can swim too. But when you have your five-year-old grandson, even though he fully life vest on, he was fine. Um, but it's it still, I don't want to have to worry about everything going in the water and we have life preserved. We have everything we need. Um, but you know, you think everything's going to be okay. So you bring everything on, you know, your purse, your phone, everything. I just, a little freaky for me. And on my birthday, I said, do not make me go swimming in this ice cold lake on my birthday. Oh, Linda, it's raining in Illinois. Yes, I am not far from you. Oh, Susan, where are you? You have to tell me. Uh, or you can message me. Let me know. How fun. All right. So um, 
first and foremost, I want to remind you of the join special. There are only a few days left. You know, sometimes I know a lot of people think, oh, joining something, then that means, you know, I have to do this, I have to do that. Really just shop. If you, you know, meet your quota, that's great. If you don't, then, you know, you gave it a try. See if it works for you, if it's something that works for you. If not, then go back to being a customer and that's perfectly fine. So there's two options, 35% off of your starter kit. So you would only pay uh, 60 for 35. And then an additional, uh, if you choose the additional package, which would be $99, our original price, and then you would pay 30, you would get 35% more in product. So you would get to choose $168.75 um, for your package. The other thing is you would also, either option, you would also get your free on stage registration. Now, registration on the um, on stage is exciting because you can pre order your Bumblebee, I say the Bumblebee set, the Be Mine suite, which is so cute and so pretty. Um, I made this, I showed you guys this before, but look how cute this little guy is. And so you get the little boxes, you get this pretty ribbon, um, you get a, a, some gorgeous paper. Anyway, you get to order that, and on the 11th, we're having an online virtual event that you can craft along with. Uh, not that far from you. Oh, Carolina. I don't think I've ever been to Carolina. I'm going to have to go there someday. Um, I love to see where you guys are from, because I'm always like, oh, I need to go there. I need to go there. Uh, anyway, so... It's just a thought and it would be great to have you. You would be guaranteed to be a demonstrator through the end of March with your grace period in April because your first official uh, quota qu quarter is January, February, March. Um, and then with April being your, your um, grace period, you also get to buy at a discount, which means you'll get to get the new annual big catalog preview and your and your pre-order so um lots of goodies can happen during this this time period so it's a fantastic deal and a fast fantastic time to join let's see what else i do have a few flat rate boxes left i'm i have a, a plenty of stamps plenty of dsp um my embellishments ribbons oh i still have quite a bit of ink left and markers and blends and when i put them in the box i put um if i have it i put the the ink the markers the blends the refill i put everything together if i have it um, otherwise you might get some blends of this color and ink and maybe markers of this color so i just try to give them all to you and that is if you purchase a hundred dollars from me in my shop using my host code you must use my host code um, by doing that once I see that you put an order in, I will ship you a box. I had a customer the other day um, put an order in. It was a new customer. I sent her a box with a little note and um, thanked her and she messaged me back. She had no idea about the special. So she was very surprised about the box. So you don't have to message me and say, oh, I put an order in, I'll see it and I will send you a box. So um, hopefully you are interested in that. It will be retired items, but I have a lot of goodies to still um, make some space for me for a new prop, new uh, supplies. So I will be sending those out for you. All right, so here is the card we're gonna be creating today. It's so cute, and I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks on it because I did change something up. Um, and I'm gonna kind of go through my thought process on it. Again, like the last card with the packages on it, which I don't have one right here, but it had these on it on the last um, thing. I wanted to do something with three stockings and it was just too much. Um, I, did, I decided not to do the three stockings, so I decided to do the one, uh, which is where I got the 150 cards from. So that is um, why I did so many, but I actually just really love the paper. I love everything about uh, the paper, which doesn't go with this bundle, but it, to me, it just worked out really well. So let's show you what I came up with. So when I first did this card, I'm going to show you that I had 
Where did I put that card? Oh, I must have put it somewhere. Okay, so, oh, it's right here. So I actually first made this larger. And then my thought was to put this on top of the top of this, but this has popped up. So I decided I didn't want to put it on top because of postage reasons. Um, because I, this would be, this is kind of thick. And then this has four layers and then also popped up. So I chose to make this a little smaller and then put this on top on, of the of the rectangle so that it would be a little flatter. But I will have to say that it will still need extra postage. Okay, um, I just put it through an envelope, um, put it in an envelope, and tried to put it through my little post office office slot uh, thing, and it did not work. So this would be um, extra postage for sure. Okay. All right, so what I did is, like I told you, I kind of assembled some items and had them ready to go. And then I realized, oh, I wanted to stop and show you guys. So you're gonna see the card base is already done. So regular A2 card base. So it this you know closes um, five and a half by four and a quarter. So it'd be eight and a half by five and a half scored. Um, the cherry cobbler in the back is um, four and an eighth by five and three eighths, my regular, usual, most likely sizes that I use. And then the white is four by five and a quarter. And the reason I do that is because over to the side of me, I have already got four by five and a quarter cut. And so that way I don't have to adjust this size if I choose to put my darker color four by five and a quarter, I don't have to cut the white also. So I decided to make that a little larger and um, put the red on. This is just a scrap piece um, that I, and usually I do three quarters because when I cut my paper, um, I usually, especially because it's DSP, I do it six by four and then, because this is again, same size as these are, and then I have that strip off the bottom, which is what I put there. And then usually when I'm cutting down the red right here, I have a little strip left over too. So that's kind of where I get those sizes and it just works out for me. Oh, thank you, Susan. Oh, I appreciate that. Um, so that is what I did. Again, I used this uh, Traditions of St. Nick. I used it a lot. Tonight, you're gonna see me use this paper a bit, which is the other side of the Santa. So I have not even used the Santa's yet, but I did use the other side here. You're gonna see it right here layered. And then this flower, let's see if you can see the flower up there. This flower right here is also this paper, okay? It gives it a little bit of texture, but then I did something a little bit different there. So I'll show you that. All right, so let's see what else I did. On one of the papers, and I don't know that I have any in here, but I'm gonna look just to see. If I do, because we have another layer. Let me see what's on the other side here. I know we probably do. I just have to find it. I might have used it all. I probably did. So on in here, there was the red part that looks like this with a with a fireplace and stuff. And that is where I use this. And remember, if you watched me do my gingerbread card, um, I used a lot of this on that card too. So um, both of those, oh, here's some right here. So both of those I used on the gingerbread card also, but I still had some because of course I bought uh, stock in this paper. And so I um, decided to layer it up. I wanted all of the colors. So we start off with, oops, we start off with our bedazzle. And this is two and three quarters by three and three quarters. Okay. And then our red piece is two and a half by three and a half. So you're going down just a quarter of a size. Your green DSP here is two and a quarter by three and a quarter. I know that's hard to see. Two and a quarter by three and a quarter. And then your tile distressed piece is two by three. Okay, so a quarter down each one. So let's go ahead and we'll adhere these together. 
And you know that I like to use liquid glue when I do anything to um, glimmer or bedazzle paper. So we'll just So let's go ahead and center that. This was really a fun card. There was a lot of layers. If you guys watch my Facebook business, Facebook page, Marcy Bessaker Designs, um, I posted a picture of all my pieces all over the place when I was working on my projects and giving a little sneak peek of what I was working on. And that was these cards. All right, so I wanted red right there, and I almost did just cherry cobbler, but then I decided you actually can see the pretty print. Um, so I decided I wanted that look. It, to me, it's a little bit vintage looking, plus I have the paper, why not use it? Um, because I have a lot of this paper, and so I decided, all right, I'm gonna use some other pieces of the paper. Again, I'm using liquid because this is a embossing folder. Even though it's just going onto plain paper, I just like to give it a good secure hold right there. Now, you'll notice on this is you can barely see, like you can see the polka dots over here and you don't really see a lot down here. You can see them a little bit over here and it doesn't matter. It just really doesn't matter. You just, it, you know, you're, you can see it, you can see the texture and so um, that's okay. All right, so this is gonna layer on top of that, but let's go ahead and do our stocking first. Um, I just kind of put it in there. I didn't really pay too close attention, but for those that did not see my last two videos, what I like to do is make a template, which is this. We cut out already 150 stockings. Um, then we can just put them back in there and then stamp on it. So I, it's easier to just cut you know, the white and then create a template. So I put this on there. You wanna kind of make sure you get it just right so it's centered right and everything. I didn't take that much time because I kind of forgot to do it till the last second before the video, but I did re-ink this. So let's see how we can do this and not make a huge mess, right? All right. Hopefully it's centered, but um, you want to, I always like to make a couple extras and then just run my, my, um, you know, keep moving my stamp until I get it just right. And what I should have done, I'm going to lift it up slowly because what I should have done is I should have light, put this right here so that it um, holds it down really well, but it actually turned out really well. So this is fine. I'm going to take that out. everybody in the middle of making their Christmas cards? Hi Joan, how are you? Okay, so you guys are talking about the um, seal and I have to tell you, it took me a while to get the seal to go just like I want it. I also keep my templates right here. I have two sets because I used it a lot, um, but I keep my templates right there. I'm going to take that out just so I can get this out of the way. Um, I struggled at first with a seal, but I have to say it's gotten a lot, lot better. Now I'm just, I use it all the time. However, I just switched over to the seal plus um, because I had a bunch of it and I thought, well, I might as well use it. But I have to say the seal plus, although a little more expensive is way easier to use and it's really fantastic. Um, so if you are able, um, I highly recommend that. All right, so another thing I did, because I did use a retired item on my card, you'll notice that this is shimmery, the white. I wanted it to be sparkly. And so even though it was kind of a vintage -y card, I had a bunch of this white, which was the real red and white from, um, I think it was last year or two years ago. Um, I really wish they had the date on these, but it was either last year or the year before. So I decided 
um, that that's what I wanted to put on here. So we're going to go ahead and um, use our seal. And we'll just go straight across that. And as long as you just cover up the red and you don't have any white poking through there, it's going to show up really fine. Oh, Susan, I use a liquid a lot too. Are your wipes for the stamps alcohol free? Um, you know what? I use the baby wipes from Costco. I've been using them for years and I've never had it, had any issue. Um, so that's what I use. I, it, they, they're fragrance free. They're, um, lint free. There's no lint all over them, which is one of my biggest things is because of that. Oh, Judy, my upline struggled with them too. And now she can use them. I watched her closely. I'm going to reply and stop and go until I could mimic. Oh, yeah. You did yours last year? Wow. Finished and addressed. Whew. Well, I'm, I have a lot, a lot, a lot to do. So um, I decided this year I'm sending a ton of them. So that's, I decided it's going to be a big Christmas card year. Um, okay, so in the sending cheer, you're going to see this. At first, I thought it was a leaf. And I thought, oh, okay, well, here's some berries. And then I'm like, well, no, there's the leaves for the holly and the berries. This is for your toe and heel for your stocking. And what a difference it makes. So we are going to add those on our stocking. Let me get these in here. So we're going to add our glue. And I'm going to use my tweezers here because they're so tiny. I'm going to be putting it down like this. So I want it like that. So I, then I turn it over in my other hand so I can use my right hand to put my glue on. And then I'm just going to lay it right there. Take the tip. Oops. Right in there. I feel like I'm going right off the page here. There we go. There we go. So there is your toe there of your sock. I feel like I'm way too far down. Hold on. Good thing I have liquid because I can move it around. There we go. Oh, I, I feel like it's all wonky. Okay, there we go. Now I'm just going to wipe off my extra glue there. And then we're going to do the heel. I barely have a hold of it, I can tell. Ah. Oh well, it's all right. All right, now the heel. There we go. I'm not gonna push it down because I think I put a little too much glue on there, but that's okay. All right, so we'll slide that over until that's done. And that red will lighten up. It looks really dark right now. The other thing I did is I used this Sharpie paint pen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in this so you can see a little bit better. And I should have done this a while ago so it could have been drying or one of them could have been drying. But the, Oh, that one has dots. Okay, that's good. Then what I'm going to show you, and this is also a retired item. I put this one in the description, uh, which is the Petal Pink, or Petal, pe Petal Party, or Petal Park, Petal Park, um, flowers. You could use, you know, one of these if you wanted to. I happen to have this punch still, which I will always keep because it, I've used it more times than not on different things. So um, this is the one I used where I got this flower here. So... I'm going to use that one because it's already done, but let me show you what I did. So I'm going to take, and this again is that same red flower with the Santas on the back, is I took a Sharpie paint marker, and I'm just going to go around and add polka dots. Now this one's nice because it's a medium. 
the medium was a lot better. I had the fine one or the the smaller one, pen, more like a pen, uh, like a regular writing pen. And when I had to go buy some more, I they only had medium, and I was like, well, we're just gonna make it work. So much better because if you look, look how the small one is. I mean, I did get some larger dots, but a lot of small ones that aren't really dots, but look how cute that is. It's a nice big polka dot look. And um, we're just gonna set that aside. I don't know if it'll be dry in time, but I'll use it on another card. So um, let's just move that over. We'll just move it off because I might need my mat. Okay. So what I did is I'm gonna show you this one because we're here anyway and I don't wanna spend your time. So I took my bone folder and I just kind of go and give my flower a little texture. Okay, so you have your flower. And then I take my piercing mat. And then I take the end of something rounded or um, even your tool on your scoreboard is fine. You can do it. It's a little finer than this. But I just kind of push it in a couple times just to kind of give it you know, that little bit of body of the flower. Okay, so we'll set that aside. The next thing that I did is I took the gold uh, vanilla ribbon and I colored it a lot of it with cherry cobbler, the dark, and I made the bows. Okay, so it was on the cherry cobbler and I colored it and um, I went through several of the, uh, markers because there was a lot of it. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to bring this in and I've gone through a ton of spools of glue dots because what I do is I put them on and I do a bunch of them. Um, but right now, since we're not doing a bunch, we're going to do this. Then the next thing I do is I take my, this is from the green paper. Okay, so this is the, um, which paper is that? Let me see. I did. I used up the DSP because I had it. I wanted to make sure I used what I had. And because I have a lot of these mailboxes left, so there will be something coming with that and the holly. Um, let's see. Back of the stockings. Oh, it was the back of the stockings. See, that's the paper I used. Okay, so that's what I used for my branches. And the branches, oh goodness, where did those come from? I forgot to add that on the list. I will look those up and let you know. Um, I'm looking. It's the Joy of Noel. The Joy of Noel is where I got the sprigs from. No. The Joy of Noel is where I got this from. I did a bedazzle one. And then Magic, Magical Meadow is where I got these from. So Joy of Noel is this um, pine one. And then these sprigs is what I call them. Is, and I do one one way and one the other. And uh, just so I kind of kept track on you know what I was doing and what I used. I'm going to put the flower on here because we need that. And normally I have like a whole row of bows and just a bunch of different ones. Hi, Heather. How are you? Oh, thank you, Judy. Hi, Diana. Um, so when you get your Joy of Noel one here, you want to make sure you clean that out. It's got little, if you turn it over, it's a little easier. You can see it. So just pull that out and that way. And not that it matters because you're covering it up, but I just don't want little pieces falling off my card. You know, when somebody's going to be like, oh no, something fell off and it's just the chads that you need to clean off. So I wouldn't worry about it. I'm going to take my bow. And I'm going to put it right about like that. Now on this card, you're going to notice that I brought it down a little farther, but I didn't want it to go over the stocking. So I decided to make it go to the left instead. It was a little easier knowing just how much I have to work with while I'm assembling these. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to overlap the center because I don't want this sticking too far out because it's kind of, you know, delicate. So I'm going to do it right about there. And then I take this one. Now you can see why I have them going the opposite ways. So I could just pick them up with my tool. And now you're going to pick up your flower. And you're going to put it right here. And I put it towards the 
down just a little bit just because um, once you push it and then you know kind of fix your flower up I just did I was kind of hoping it was going to be one postage I don't know who I was thought I was kidding but um, I was kind of thinking oh one stamp will be fine but no but that's okay it is what it is um, so there we have this oh no what am I doing I need the glue dots again so we're going to take the glue dots and put that on there and then I'm just going to set that aside for right now we're going to put our dimensionals on Oh, thank you, Judy. I do really appreciate a thumbs up, everybody. Thank you. I went ahead and left the loop on, which was for the tags, but when you think about it, um, you have a loop on your stocking, right, to hang it up. So um, I left the loop on there. All right, so that's how I did my dimensionals on that. We're going to take this piece, and we're going to do the same thing. Let's put our dimensionals on. And I just kind of went to up the center. And then I did some on the side. So if you wanted to kind of, you know, either do it like this or like this, this is longer. So that's why I did them this way. All right. So let's bring our card in. Uh, the Merry Christmas on the inside came from the Brightest Glow. I just love this one. Um, so that's where that came from. All right, and I think I already, oh, I didn't stamp this one, but most of them, they're already stamped too on the back. I try to stamp them when they're at this point, if not beforehand. Um, I, then I stamp the back of my cards before I add all of this on. It just gives it a little uh, more time to, uh, for less, you know, messing up the front of your card when you're having to flip them over and stack them and everything because those little green is, are pretty delicate, so you wanna be careful of that. All right, so what I did is I just went a little bit from the bottom. So I just kinda of eyeballed it and went about right there. So that's how I did it. We're gonna put our stocking on. This was a really a fun card. I love when there's a card with a lot of pieces and then you're putting it together um, because it's just so pretty. And of course, anything with some bling. If I would have had more bling, I would have put it on the outside like I did my other card, um, the gift card, but I, I'm kind of running out. I'm kind of being stingy a little bit, but, um, I, and I wanted it to look a little more vintage-y, but I had, to, I had to put some on there. All right, so when you do your stocking, leave just a little bit of room, but tilt your stocking like it's hanging um, from the chimney. I mean, from the mantle, you know, you wanna just kind of have it like that. So you're kind of at the top of the white, which is okay because it's going to kind of be covered up a little bit. And, but just give yourself a little space down there. And now we're going to bring in our piece here. And I lift it up. I make sure that my, whatever your pokey tool is, is holding onto the, the glue dot. Okay. So the glue dot helps you get them um, stuck to whatever, wherever you're putting them. And then I add glue around the glue dot. Okay, so the glue dot's in the center and I add my glue around because I want to make sure this isn't going to go anywhere. And so now I'm going to place this right above my piece right here. And the glue dot's holding it, but I want to just make sure that the glue, you can tuck your ribbons back if you need to, like this one was kind of flipping up, but this one I want shorter. You can leave them as long as you want. I kind of found that when they're a little shorter, it just kind of looks a little neater um, on this card. I don't always go shorter, but um, on this one I decided to. So I'm gonna tag that over a little bit. There we go. And so that is gonna be secure. Now, this at the top, it's secure. It's glued down, but if you have a feeling that this is gonna be kind of lifting a little bit, then grab yourself your mini dimensionals. And there's only a couple that I felt like that, that I had to fix. So take your mini dimensional, take the, the top off of it and just tuck it way up underneath. And then just kind of push down and it will not maybe adhere to your base and your top, but your top will adhere to it and kind of you know, pull itself down a little bit and that's just a little more secure. So it just adds 
that little bit if you think that it's not enough. Then what I did, oh, I lost my, maybe I used them all. Okay, so we're gonna use the, I put them all in here. This is what I took with me to do my cards when I was out of town. I took all the colors that I needed. I'm gonna do one large, and these are the, these ones here. The adhesive back sparkle gems, which I love. I'm gonna put the large one on the flower. Again, this kind of ties in the bedazzle, and I think the bedazzle really can go with silver or gold because um, it's like a champagne color, but I think it's just so pretty. I just try to find some flat spots on here. So there's a flat spot, and then there's one right about there. So there we go. Thank you, Carol. I'm glad you guys like it. So there we go. So what I did is I did these two um, colors, and let me find a third one. Hold on. I'll grab another one. There we go. So my thought was to do the cards in the same colors that I did the packages in, but I wanted to change up the toes and everything, kind of change that around. And so I changed the toes to, you know, the opposite colors. And there we go. That's how I ended up with, I was going to move the light over a little bit, um, all, but all three of the different colors and it was really a fun card and I absolutely love this paper. Right, a few layers can make a big difference. And also the embossing, just add some of that, you know, any any embossing back that would be so pretty, but I thought that the distressed tile um, looked a little more uh, vintage. Now these leaves up here, I have to tell you, I also took this and so on the leaf, what I did is, let me see what I have. Oh, I have another little flower here. So I'll put it right here. So all I did with the leaf with this is I just kind of went like that and I just kind of squiggled and just kind of went like this on the leaves after they were cut. So take take this and, you know, take your uh, paint and this dries really fast. Oh, where did my, this is dry already. Let me see if I can pick it up. So this is dry already. See how fast that is? So when you're doing it, do all of your, um, your coloring, do it all ahead of time, let them dry. I do them like before I'm gonna go make dinner or when I'm done in here at the night, this is the last thing I do and my whole desk was full of flowers. And then the next night, full of leaves. See how it's already dry over here? It's a little wet still right there, but this is already dry. Um, so it's a Sharpie, so be careful, but it is a paint Sharpie. And this one is the medium one. Oh, and make sure right here that it's water-based because they do have oil-based and you don't want that. Make sure you get water-based. So it works fantastic for that kind of thing. Um, no, I don't have a PDF for it because I, I, I didn't do it in a class or anything, but um, I did give the measurements at the beginning and um, I think everything, I will go back in and add the, what was the one thing I was gonna add? Oh, the Noel, the, the two places I got the sprigs, I didn't add that in. The Joy of Noel for the Bedazzle and then the Magical Meadow was for the, where I got the green dye from. Okay, so again, like I've said before, is just kind of look around at what you have. Look around at what stamp sets and what dyes there are and kind of come up with your thought on what you'd like to see, you know, on a card. Like I knew I was looking for some kind of sprig or greenery of some kind. Um, and I knew I wanted just a little flower. And I think I saw something online that had an image kind of like this. It wasn't stamping up. But all I saw was a ribbon and a sprig with a little polka dot flower. And I was like, oh, you know what? That would look really cute. And I had this thought, but I hadn't figured out what I was going to do with that yet. And um, so anyway, that's what I kind of got that idea from. 
So I will add those other two items um, on the list, on the supply list. So don't forget, if you want to make something like this, I believe the paper is in stock. I believe the sending chair is not right now. Um, but this was my third card of the three that I was showing. So I wanted to make sure, oh, I need to add gems to my pile over there still. Um, but I wanted to make sure that I showed my cards because um, hopefully you guys bought this sending cheer and you can recreate some of these cards or at least get some thoughts and ideas. Remember this one will be extra postage because I tried um, putting a piece of paper over, putting it in an envelope and it will, you know, no surprise. My cards last year were extra postage. So, well, you know, it is what it is. The poinsettia would be very pretty. And that's the thing. If you don't have a card like this, you could turn it sideways and put a beautiful sentiment on the inside and maybe put a little poinsettia next to your nice big Merry Christmas. Like the one on the inside is just beautiful. And you could use that on the, you know, the inside here and maybe uh, add a poinsettia or, you know, another like some holly or whatever or stocking. If you have this paper, use whatever DSP you have. Um, but that maybe I do need the DSP. Oh, you do. When I saw that it was um, matched the Santa, I thought for sure because I, I didn't buy the Santa set. But when I saw the paper, I did buy the Santa set and I still haven't used it, but I've used a ton of this paper. Um, and the reverse side is absolutely beautiful that you could use even, you know, not Christmas. So it's very pretty. Let's see if there's any other questions. Oh, thank you, Kathy. Oh, thanks, Anique. Yeah, that was, um, this one was a hand done bow. Um, so, and it looks just as pretty. I ended up doing two on my cards. Um, this one has two because I, I, I think the ribbon was on back order for a while. And so, and I was in the middle of making them. And then I thought, well, that's okay. The two will be, will be fine. Um, so I did two. This one, I happen to have already had a, a three bow. And maybe I should check this one in the postage, but uh, this one, and then this was my, one of them was my original. This was tonight. Yeah. So this was one of my original ones with the three. And then I went with the two because I was running out of ribbon. Uh, the, the DSP is an online exclusive. That's correct. So um, sometimes once they're gone, they're gone. But I think they're getting that back. Uh, oh, you, oh, you met in the center of the bow. Yes, that would be really pretty to do a little poinsettia in the center. Yep. That would be really, really pretty. I mean, you could put so many different things there. You could even add like some little holly or berries or whatever. Um, there's so much things you can do. But I wanted to give you the, the idea, add a little bit of bling, add a little bit of the, the oops, no, I got a glare. The little bit of the um, bedazzle or the sparkle paper, the glimmer paper, the, the gold. I would use the gold because of the, uh, wild wheat is like that gold tone, but um, it's such a pretty card. And then, of course, I added a little bedazzle up there, too, to kind of tie it in. All right, everybody. So um, happy end of October. Have a safe Halloween. Um, we are going to stay home, and my son will be bringing my grandson over. And I think the whole family is going to be uh, Star Wars themed. So I will take a picture so I can show it to you next week. I'm excited. You guys are so welcome. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, so don't forget again, the join special, just a few days left. Um, don't miss out on it. It's, it's worth a try. Give it a try. Um, get some awesome items in your kit and um, it, it you won't be sorry. I, I still have people at the very beginning that said, I'm only gonna do it for the kit. I don't think I can stay which is fine because what happens, she stayed. Um, a couple people still are on my team uh, for giving it a try. And they said, you know what? It's easier than you think. And it is. And they strictly just use a coupon and that's it. So um, they don't do any sales. They don't do classes. They don't do anything. So 
Um, they, they don't do anything. They are smart and shop at the coupon is what they do. So not that they don't do anything. That's how I started. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a fantastic week, and I will see you on Wednesday, November 1st already. Also, don't forget Bingo. Um, the RSVP is by the 5th. Um, there will probably still be a few kits, but I'm not making a bunch of extras. So um, there's some 3D items. Oh, and I did come up with a fourth item, and it is a 3D item. So you will have the little box there that you get a sneak peek for. It will have four, that will be one project. You will have four note cards inside. That will be a second project. A third project is a fancy fold. And the fourth one is a very useful 3D project. So I hope you'll join. There's a link below and I will see you guys Wednesday. Bye everybody.